Hey everyone, I'm Ricky from the Smalls RV Adventures, and this week I'm going to show you how to winterize your RV for continuous use in the winter using an air compressor and RV antifreeze. Stay tuned everyone. This process takes under five minutes, but I'm going to slow down the video so that you guys can get exact instructions how to winterize your RV using the air compressor. You're going to need a socket wrench for your node rod. You're also going to need a screwdriver or any other sort of metal piece that can fit through these, uh, these holes, holes here so that you can turn a, a node wrench. You may want to buy a second pack of uh, a node rods just in case your node rod is bad. I'm going to use an air compressor but you can use anything that uh, you have to uh, to shoot air through the uh, through your city water connection. And I have a one gallon bottle of RV, RV antifreeze. You're gonna need some of this to uh, pour through your trap sinks. One thing I didn't mention is your air compressor quick connect. I'm gonna put all these things down in the description in the video, but you need this to hook up to your city water connection so that you can connect the air compressor to blow the air out. Uh, as I mentioned, you're also gonna need something to power your air compressor. Uh, you can use a plug socket. I usually use this Jackery here uh, to give me power to operate the air compressor. Okay, the first step you wanna take is to open up your low point drains. Your low point drains are located under your RV on most models. But you're going to have to look at your guide to look exactly where your low peak drains are on my model. It's right underneath the rig and you can see the hot water and the cold water labeled with red pipes for the hot water, blue pipes for the cold water. You want to open up the drains and let the water leak out. I uh, already opened up my drains and drained it so it's going to be no water coming out. But you're going to see water coming out of there. You can use a bucket and have the water drain into a bucket so you don't have a big spill anywhere. But that's the first step you want to take. The next thing you're going to want to do is drain your hot water tank. You're going to have to open up the valve here and you have a water pressure release valve. You want to make sure that this water is cooled down if you had your hot water uh, pressure on, uh, that your hot water heater on. Uh, you want to let it cool down. Then you're going to connect this socket wrench to your anode here. And you can turn it. If you can't turn it, you're going to have to use a tool, like I told you before, a little wrench. You put the wrench through these little holes. The, the, and the, uh, the wrench, put this screwdriver through the wrench, and then you can turn it. See how it's turning? So that you can loosen up the anode. Uh, and it'll turn and it'll come right out. Once you get the anode out, you can let the water leak out. I already drained mine, so you're not gonna see a lot of water coming out. But once you drain it, you can press this, open up the pressure release, and you're gonna let the water drain out with the pressure release. Now, this anode is a little, it's not damaged, but it's a little messed up. Uh, but if you, if you see it all eaten up, you can replace it with other anode rods. They're cheap from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. But this is how you get this portion out. Take it out, open up the re uh, pressure release so you can release all the water out. And always remember, for this segment, you want to leave this piece right here because you're going to put it right back in after you finish uh, your process and you're going to continue uh, using your RV. If you're going to store it, then you just leave everything right here and you close up this vent. But I'm going to show you how to continue using your RV. All right, that's it for this step. All right, guys, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to get your air compressor quick connect. I had to use a little adapter there because uh, my quick connect couldn't fit into my air compressor so your air compressor is going to come with a, a large amount of adapters you can just use the adapter stick it into the quick connect and then you're good to go so you're going to take your uh, quick adapter for your air compressor and you're going to screw it into your city water connection then you have to take the air compressor 
uh, however you may do it. I don't like to let it hang, so I put it in between here uh, just to make sure that it's not going to fall. And uh, everything is nice and steady. I lock the air compressor in, and I, uh, I turn it on. That now is blowing, is blowing air through the lines. Now that you have air blowing through your lines, you want to open up your drains, uh, your sink. Uh, I already empty out my water. I'm just showing you going through the motions and purposes of the video. But when you open up your sinks, you're going to have something coming through if there's water in there. Right now, you don't hear just air coming through my faucets. So you want to leave it on for 15, 20 seconds just to see if anything is coming through. You want to repeat the same process for your bathroom sinks. Again, it's only air coming through. Only air coming through. There's uh, no water because I emptied out the lines already. And you can leave these on for 20 seconds, 10 minutes, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. You do one at a time. Do your cold water. Nothing's coming out. Do this, the hot water. Nothing's coming out. You just want to make sure everything is... Uh, all the water is coming out through the, the line, so it's just air flowing through. For your bathtub, it's the same process. You just want to cut on the uh, one faucet, nothing coming out. Cut on the other faucet, nothing's coming out. You can do one at a time, nothing's coming out. Do the other one, just air coming out. That's it. Cut it off. The next thing you don't want to forget is this bad boy here your shower head so again you want to turn the hot water on see if anything will come out and i was nothing's coming out because i already blew all the water out of there do it the cold water make sure nothing's coming out only air and there you go that's your bathroom done the last area that you want to blow air through is your outdoor shower open this up and pull your shower head out turn on your hot water let all the air blow out of it let the water blow out you can close it up and open up the cold water let all the cold water let everything blow out close it back and you can just put this right back when you do it I turn I turned off the uh, air compressor so you can hear me for the video because the, uh, the outdoor shower is right next to the air compressor. Well, I blew the air out previously, but this is just for uh, purposes of the video. So you see, to uh, don't forget to blow the air out of this portion of the uh, of your ring. Okay, let's go back in because we still have to use some antifreeze. This is just the process of blowing all the water out of your lines using the quick connect uh, and your air compressor. Okay guys, the last part of this uh, task is really simple. The antifreeze you're gonna use is just, a, a, it's not a, a large bit. You're gonna pour some antifreeze down your kitchen sink. You don't have to pour a lot, just about one glass full. It's not a lot. You pour some down so it goes into your holding tank just in case there's a small amount of water in there uh, that would allow the, uh, the, the water not to freeze. Uh, remember, after you blow everything out uh, and you're closing up, you want to uh, close your low point drain. Because remember, we opened them. You have to close them and then you put the antifreeze down into your uh, your sink. We're going to repeat the process going into the bathroom. Now, remember, we talked about your toilet. Again, you're going to have to open up the toilet. You're gonna press the uh, the flush, let the toilet flush, pour some of this down your drain. Once it closes, you wanna pour some on the top of your drain too. So just in case uh, this freezes, uh, it won't freeze because you have the antifreeze in there and you wanna have some water on top there as an extra barrier to keep all the odors down. You wanna to come to your sink. You wanna do the same thing to your sink. You pour some antifreeze down your sink. Same thing with your tub. You want to come to your tub and you pour some antifreeze down your tub so that it's in all the traps. It's in all the traps. It's about a cup each and all of these locations of RV antifreeze. 
All right, guys. Guess what, folks? We're all done. You just winterized your RV for continuous winter use or for storage. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you really liked it, please subscribe. If you want to uh, mention anything that I missed or something that you liked about the video, please comment below. Remember, all the products I use are going to be down in the description uh, where you can uh, buy them from Amazon or you can buy them on your own, whichever you like. But this has been another video brought to you by the Smalls RV Adventures. I'm Ricky. Until next time, have a great day, everyone.